Well, here we are at the end of the week, and uh, we're also at the end of our conversation about the tongue, and I suspect that many of us are really going to be path, glad to be past this topic and hopefully get one that is um, not quite so painful. Because I think in reality, most of us, when we reflect back on various things we've said over the years, things we've written or communicated, uh, we wish we hadn't. And uh, but here's one of the things I, I love about God, that his, my favorite name for God is the Redeemer. He redeems the things that are lost. And God gives us a, he's, he's the author of the ultimate mulligan. That's a word we use in golf, you know, that we, get, we take a second shot and get to get a do-over. And God's whole plan of grace is giving us a chance to do it over and this time to get it right. But he points out this really common contradiction that we're all pretty aware with. Uh, he says in, in verse 9 of chapter 3, he says, With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. And he says, my brothers, this should not be. Uh, duh. He said, can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? Not in nature, they can't. My brothers, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? No, neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Uh, so here he brings out ob the obvious contradiction. But let me tell you where the difference lies. That these things he talks about, the, the fresh water and the salt water, the fig tree and the, the olive tree and so forth, um, the thing is they're not subject to a sin nature. And that's why we can have this kind of contradiction because we have a fleshly nature that uh, is really uh, seeks to dominate who we are. And we've received the Spirit of God who gives us the power not to be dominated by our fleshly impulses, but to, but to come under the controlling influence of the Holy Spirit. And so even though these things aren't true in nature, uh, they are true in man, that we can both praise the Lord and our Father God, and at the same time we turn around and curse somebody. And it's funny how you, easily it happens, and un unwarily it happens. How many times you've been in church, you've been worshiping God, praising God, and you know God really spoke to me, and you get in your car and you go into traffic, and somebody slams their brakes on in front of you or swerves and cuts you off, and suddenly all sorts of uh, choice adjectives are flowing out of your mouth. And you just realize, I've just blessed God and praised him, and now I'm cursing this guy or this gal because they're such a terrible driver. Um, that's just an illustration I use because it's one that's pretty common to everyone, or maybe it's just common to me. But the simple fact of the matter is that it's because of our sinfulness. We have this fleshly nature in our bodies that seeks to express itself. He, he described it. Remember we talked about it yesterday. He says it's a restless evil, that, that an evil that's full of deadly poison and, and words can be a deadly poison to destroy. As we see in many of the, much of the rhetoric that's being thrown around today in our culture, these words are deadly poison. And he says, we need to strive to not be those who enter into that, that we don't fall into that tit for tat or fighting fire with fire. I've heard Christian leaders say, we need to fight fire with fire. And, and I sit back and go, wait a minute, I'm not sure that's what the scripture says. No, the answer to all of what we've been talking about this week is not only to control the tongue, but to really understand the source of what we speak and where it comes from. And that's what Jesus uh, informed us about in Matthew 12, 34, when he said, uh, uh, he says, for out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. So the best way to really get control over what I say with my mouth is to really bring my heart, my inner man, my inner being under the controlling power of the Holy Spirit. And again, this is why I say that we always should start our day in the Word of God and in prayer, really allowing our, our disposition to become oriented to God and to His truth. Because if we're focusing on the Lord and seeking His will, not only does God give us what we need before we need it, that's one of the things that's been most amazing to me is how God will speak into my heart about something and then I'll find that very day I will need that insight, that understanding to manage a situation and navigate it correctly. But also it, it enables us just to have a, a sweetness to our disposition that may not be natural to us at this point in our spiritual journey. And that's really a change that God can work, that he changes our hearts. Have you ever noticed that 
uh, as Nehemiah put it in, Nehemiah, in his eighth chapter of that little book, he said, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. We know that when we have joy, we have more energy, we're more forceful and thoughtful. And it's also when we have the joy of the Lord in our hearts, the things that we say tend to be words of truth words of righteousness and we tend to say things that will not simply correct but also will heal and build up and restore and redirect because when I see somebody who's doing something that's incorrect I don't want to just you know judge them I want to redirect them in a way that is healthy and that's why myself and I see people who are making really bad life choices and decisions it just brings such a heaviness and a grief into my heart because I just know that if we disobey God's truth, nothing good can come out of it. But that heaviness that I feel in my heart and that grief I feel is something that drives me to prayer, but I can leave it there in the altar, refreshed in my spirit to continue to say those things that are true and right. And if I have the opportunity, I can in a very lovingly way redirect that person in the paths of his righteousness. So I guess that's the challenge I want to finish this up with this week is that let's pray that God not only puts his word in our hearts and, and brings our life into agreement with his truth, but that when we speak to people and it's a word of correction, that we do it not just to illustrate or show them where they're wrong, but rather to redirect them in a path that is the path of life. That, let me put it this way, 10% of our conversation is the correction, 90% is redirection. And you get that balance in, in, your, in your conversations and you'll find that uh, you'll be building people up. And people who want to be built up will thank you for it. Understand me, some people do not want to be built up and they'll reject what you have to say and you just have to leave it there. But those who have a desire to grow in Christ will listen and they'll take your advice and they'll thank you for helping to redirect them in the paths of righteousness. Look forward to continuing our conversation next week. Pray you have a great weekend. Many blessings.